Gentlemen, fellow strategists, welcome to the four of the career development workshop of the Institute of Strategic Management organized for staff of the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC. We will take the opening formalities and we start with the opening prayer, which is the faith force. And um, before then, I'd like to thank those of us who came in all the way from worry a few of them here this morning and um, for those of us who have also been very consistent and uh, mr austin who has been the most punctual student in this batch yes he will get a plaque from the institute once the president comes he will take a picture with him and then we'll give him a plaque that he will put in his office that's but you gave it to Mr. Ayo Charles. He was the most punctual in that class. And in this class, he's the one that will get the plaque. So the next time we have a workshop, you try and come early so that you can get a, a plaque. Let me talk like Wiki. <laughs> All right. Let's take the opening prayers. One, two, go. Oh, God of creation. Direct our noble cause, guide our leaders right, help our youth there to, to know, in love and honesty to grow and live in just and true. Great lofty heights heart day to build a nation where peace and justice shall reign. The faith force. We see no limit to what we can be. We see no limit to what we can we see no limit to what we can have because we see no limit to the power of God. We see no limit to the power of our mind, and we see no limit to the power in the word of God. Thank you. All right, good morning. Once again, we have today taking the first session. We are supposed to take a retirement scenario, scaling the hurdle by uh, the president, but he's on his way, so we'll have to start with this class. Um, Dr. Koro is a member of the is a medical doctor with more than 35 years practice experience and um, is in charge of the medical uh, outreach of the house on the rock church is the medical director of that facility is uh, we are church members and i have known him for over uh, six years or thereabout and today you know he presents he is in charge of the medical outreach in my church, and I have been um, seen him do various presentations. And part of what I liked about his presentation is the ability to say very serious issues with humor and able to convey his message. You know, the health is a very important part of our being. And bringing Dr. Koro today to emphasize on the things that are critical to our health, especially as we age, as we grow older, there are a few things that you need to take into consideration. And so this morning, he will be taking us on managing your health and social engagement ahead of retirement. For those of us who think that um, we are far from retirement, we still need to have consideration for our health. So please, let's put a clap, let's give a clap to, for Dr. Okoro as he comes to make his presentation. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, it's, um, I'm glad to be here this morning, and um, thank you, Mr. Nat, for the opportunity you've given me to make this presentation this morning. And um, it's, um, we are supposed to be talking about managing your health and um, social engagements ahead of um, retirement. So I'm. Um, I'm actually a physician of internal medicine and a wellness consultant, and um, this is an area of passion for me. 
And we, we've, um, So, um, we are talking about managing your health and wellness. Um, sorry, your health and social engagement ahead of retirement. And um, it's actually a discussion. I'm not here to give lectures, so it would be nice for all of us to participate. It is usually said that um, health is wealth. And there's another adage that says that in our youth, during our youth, we use our youth to, um, to hustle and make money. But as we, you know, later down the line, as we age, we begin to use the money to, to, to look for health, which is not supposed to be so. So that is why it's important for us to, you know, be proactive concerning our health, especially as it regards the fact that we are heading towards um, retirement. So, this is the outline we are going to follow today. Go into a bit of introduction, then we should be able to define health. What is actually health? And what are the, you know, what is retirement and the challenges associated with retirement, especially in the area of health. Before we now talk about the role of social engagement in health, and then we should be able to give tips on achieving healthy aging and uh, social engagement, and then we'll be able to summarize and take questions. So um, health actually, according to the uh, World Health Organization, Health is not the mere absence of disease. And that is a very important fact that has escaped a lot of people. The fact that I'm not having headache or the fact that I'm not having fever, you know, or I'm not feeling tired or something like that, that is not, those are, they're not the yardstick to measure whether I am healthy or not. But, it's a state of physical, mental, spiritual, and social well-being. These are the different dimensions of health. Because somebody can do, if we, if, if, because most of the time we depend on physical health to talk about our total health. And that is why we see somebody who does 100 meters and he collapses and dies, or somebody playing football, he's quite physical and healthy, you know, physically healthy, but he collapses and he dies, which means there were other aspects that were not taken into consideration. So we're going to look at those other aspects. Now, physical health refers to the health of your body, the physical body that you're seeing. The mental health refers to your mind, your psychological and emotional well-being you know, to ensure optimum productivity. In fact, research statistics has it that I think about one in four, one in six, I think that ratio, Nigerians are having mental problems. One in four. That is how common, you know, mental health issues are. But it's an area that is easily ignored. Then social health talks about your ability to form and maintain healthy social connections. We are social beings. You know, it is not good for man to be alone. You need the help meet. You need to connect and communicate with others. It has very important um, effect on your health, being able to connect with other human beings. And then we talk about spiritual health. You know, we're talking about you know, the feeling of inner peace. You know, finding purpose and meaning in life. And um, being able to feel accomplished. Because there are some people that spent their time 
pursuing money and by the time they made all the money, in our old age has come and the person, you know, it, 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 it used to be said that, uh, I remember that somebody that um, said that somebody is so poor that all he has is money. Have you heard that comment before? That somebody is so poor that all he has is money. After you spent your life hustling and pursuing all kinds of material things, and then when you get to you know, retirement, you see that there is nothing in you. Just you see money, and the money doesn't mean anything to you any longer. And the person will be full of regrets. It doesn't have to be so. So, sorry, don't want any disturbance. Let me put it on silence. Yeah, thanks. Sorry about that. Now, what is retirement? Retirement is actually the time of life when one permanently exists. You exist from work, the workforce. And then the question is, how do you exist? It's either by choice or by Force. You know, somebody, you know, decides to say, I, I think I've had enough. I think I have to bow out when the ovation is loudest. You know, in, and that is actually why we are here. We want to, you know, be proactive. We want to, you know, um, plan towards a meaningful exit. Not that we'll be there and then somebody will tell us, oh, guy, it's time. You know, I wish our country was, I mean, this knowledge is quite rife among our leaders so that um, somebody will know when to bow out. So it's either by choice or by compulsion. And the traditional retirement age for civil service in Nigeria is about 60 years or 35 years in service, whichever comes first. And... Usually, the retirees look forward to a wonderful uh, retirement. But the truth is that retirement is a major change in life, and it has its consequences. If you don't uh, plan towards it, that change is quite, could be drastic, and um, it doesn't have to be so. So you have to choose how you want it. Is it by choice or is it by compulsion? So let's look at the effects of retirement. How does retirement affect your health? Now, when we talk about um, health, these are the areas we've talked about. Physical health, mental health, social health, emotional health. When we talk about physical health, we're talking about the health of your body you know, improved quality of life. You have stronger bones and muscles. You're able to, you know, you're fit to do things. And you're able, your immunity is high. You're able to fight off illnesses. You don't get sick easily. And then when we talk about social health, you know, we're referring to social integration, ability to, you know, find new friends, you know, um, not just friends in the workplace. A lot of workers don't have friends at home. You have friends in the office, but your home is not a friendly area for you. I, I used to know of, um, the story of somebody, a man that each time he came back from work, once the, the, the children and even the pets, the wife, everybody, when they hear the sound of the horn outside, there will be, I mean, everybody will just run away, run away from the parlor because <laughs> they just stay <take> calm. <laughs> the lion is here, okay? It doesn't have to be so. And then the mental health, we talk about, you know, ability to reduce anxiety. You don't have to uh, have depression, you know. Avoid emotional stress, because there are two types of stress, physical and emotional stress. 
whether stress is physical or emotional, the pathway is the same. You know, a, a lot of adrenaline, adrenaline pump is on, and as the adrenaline pump is working, and we call it adrenaline bucket, as long as it's full, it disturbs your health in ways that you don't, uh, you wouldn't like it. So you have to be able to prevent not just physical stress, but emotional stress. And then the other one is increased cognitive functioning. That's your ability to reason, your ability to think, your ability to, you know, iron out issues. The truth is that as we age, the cognitive ability begins to diminish. And then the other area is, um, you know, you feel more energetic, and then sleep. We're going to talk about sleep. Sleep is a very important aspect of health, which we usually joke with. And then emotional health, talk about self-confidence, increased feeling of self-worth. You know, most of the things there are actually equally applied to spiritual health, you know. Increased feelings of success, you have positive mood. You're not afraid of death, you know, because you're able to connect with, that we call it transcendence. You're able to connect with, you know, the uh, you know, greater powers, divinity. So, how does retirement affect these areas of health? Under physical health, this, we mentioned this, but when you are retiring, by the time you get to retirement age, maybe 60, you come under the increased effects of aging, and this period is associated with increased risk of chronic diseases. You know, um, we talk about the chronic diseases. Um, the, um, the five top killers, you know, in the world today, in terms of diseases, they are chronic diseases. Do we remember any top killers? Yes, hypertension, yes. Uh, cancer, yes. Diabetes. Mm -hmm. Kidney disease. You missed out chronic obstructive diseases, you know, respiratory disorders. Yeah. Fat heart diseases are number one. Then the other one is stroke. And the other one is cancer in diabetes and then respiratory diseases. They are chronic diseases, and but the truth is that you can overcome them, you can control them. They don't have to control you. Okay, so um, in retirement, you're going to have increased risk of acute diseases because your immunity drops and then reduce mobility. The joints are no longer flexible. You're not able to, you know, move your body as you used to. And then there's a, a greater tendency to be sedentary. In fact, that is a big sickness right now. Because of technology, the sedentary lifestyle is, is quite common. Sedentary lifestyle is when you sit at a place, when you sit maybe for more than an hour or two, it's sedentary lifestyle. Anything that makes you to sit for a long time is a sedentary lifestyle. You know, um, when you're driving and you are, you, you are behind the wheel for more than two hours, maybe you're traveling to Lagos and you're driving for more than two hours without stepping out of the car, it is sedentary lifestyle. So we are not created to be people that are sitting. That's why we are, we are made to be standing upright. So, but medically we have discovered that sitting for a long time is as bad as smoking. Somebody who smokes a lot and somebody who sits a lot, they have the same effects. You know, it affects their health in the same way. So sedentary lifestyle is an issue that you have to really fight against because it, it can impact your health negatively. So retirement means you are a senior citizen in the aged class. And what is aging? It's an irreversible biological phenomenon. 
You know, persons above 60 years of age are classified as aged persons. Now, when you're aging, one thing usually happens, your physical fitness, your ability to carry out functions begins to drop. Now, in early life, this is your functional capacity. The blue line shows, um, let me even start with the, the orange line. This is how it actually goes. If you ignore yourself, you are not, you know, you're not taking charge to make sure that you maintain your health. This is how your functional capacity will go. To, from the time of birth, it increases. As you get into adult life, it begins to drop. As you cross into the older age, it now goes into the area of disability. And then, but when you are proactive about it and you are taking, you are doing the things I'm going to discuss today, this is how your functional capacity will remain. And it will be said that this person lived a good quality life and died in his, um, in his or her, you know, in old age, with full of life and full of strength. You know, so that's the way it's supposed to be. Now, these are changes associated with aging. When somebody um, is advancing in age, the first one we talk about is musculoskeletal changes. That is, changes in your muscle, changes in your bones. As you get older, the, the muscle mass begins to drop. You know, that bulk, that abobi appearance begins to disappear. In fact, the muscle tissue begins to be replaced. As you, are, as you are getting older, the muscle is being replaced by fat. You know? So when you see somebody that used to be V-shaped, as the person is going on without, you know, being careful to maintain the muscle bulk, it will be going down and it will be replaced by fat. That's why as time goes on, the person that used to be very strong starts looking flabby. And then the, there's decrease in bone density because um, some cash and minerals have been drained away from the bones. So the bones are no longer strong enough. You know, they become softer, brittle as the person is aging. And there are some people that have what you call pathological fracture. You know, the, the, the bones become like this cube, you know, like crackers. They can easily break if care is not taken. Especially for those who forgot to watch their weight. The bones can no longer carry the weight. So the, the bones can break under heavy weights. So those are some of them. And then um, cardiovascular changes. The, the heart muscles begin to stiffen. The, the muscles in the, bl the blood vessels begin to become stiff. So it's easier for... You know, uh, and there's a decreased elasticity of the heart muscle because the blood vessels have a lot of elastic tissue. So when the heart is pumping, it's elastic tissue that would expand and retract to push the blood forward. But as we are getting older, the elastic tissue is giving way to, you know, to fiber, just fibrous tissue, and then the, that uh, blood vessel becomes quite thick. So the heart now has to pump harder to blood through the blood vessels and it becomes easier for somebody to have um, hypertension. So the blood pressure begins to go up as we are getting older. So increased risk of hypertension, the metabolic changes. The person, you know, their body's ability to digest food begins to drop. You know, this is a very important point. As you are getting older, the, your, the, your body's ability to handle food is reducing. So the wise thing is for you to reduce the quantity of food that you eat. You know, you reduce the quantity and the number of times, you know, that you eat. All that, you, you, you be very careful about food because um, we grew up knowing that the uh, papa used to have the lion's share. 
and then the children will have their smaller share. But for the sake of health, the children should rather have the lion's share. Papa should be having the baby share. You know? So for the sake of health, the body is not able to handle so much food. And if you load your body with a lot of food, the metabolism is slow. The excess will be converted to fat. I begin to add unnecessary weight, which will equally have a negative impact on your health. So another one is um, changes in glucose metabolism. We are going to look at it for that. There's what we call insulin resistance. When you load your body with a lot of food, and of course, maybe you're not very active, the body will just take the little that it needs because the insulin is pushed into the bloodstream. That insulin will, you know, um, cause the blood sugar, you know, to enter the cells. The cells will just use a bit of the sugar. And what cells of the body use sugar most? This one is biology. Eh? Yes, the brain. Okay, apart from the brain, is the muscle. The muscles, you know, when you are very active, it's the muscles that are burning the, the, the sugar in your body. That's why when you see footballers, after some time they start drinking, you know, maybe glucose or something just to keep giving fuel to the muscles. But remember I said that as you are getting older, the muscles are reducing. So the engine house for burning the sugar is going down. So if you now load yourself with a lot of food, it's converted to sugar. And since the muscles are not that active, what the insulin does to help you is simply to convert the sugar to fat. And where is the fat stored? Huh? We are going to see where it's stored. In the days, you know, before retirement, when you were a lady, the fat used to be stored in, maybe in the hip areas, in the breast and all that. So you look, you have that coke shape appearance. But as you are getting old, as you are advancing in age, the equation begins to change. The fat is now being deposited around the midsection. So from um, being coke shaped, you begin to look like an apple. So changes in glucose metabolism. And then hormonal changes, we're going to look at it later. We've talked about these other ones. Then cholesterol will tend to go up too. When you take a lot of uh, starch and um, you know, fat and um, red meat and all that, the, f the resultant effect is that your cholesterol level begins to go up. And then hormonal changes are very important. They are hormone, you know, if you're a man in your youth, you're having a lot of testosterone, and this is the effect of testosterone. It helps, you know, the, helps you to build your muscle bulk. You can see there will be the strong bones and you know, having extra energy. But as you are advancing in age, the testosterone level begins to drop. And these are the effects. You can see the, the muscles are now being replaced by fats. You know, let's not talk about the Nepal area, the low sex drive and all that. Then that's the issue of osteoporosis. I talked about the muscles, I mean the bones, losing minerals. For the lady, it's something similar. You know, because your hormone level, the estrogen that used to make you a lady is beginning to drop. You know, research has shown that women live longer than men, you know, and um, usually because of the effects of testosterone. You know, women are tougher in handling emotional issues than men, and they live longer. But as your estrogen level begins to drop, these are the things that begin to happen. Dry eyes, hot flashes, you gain weight, dry skin, memory issues, depression, hair loss, decreased libido, bone loss again, and then um, poor sleep. Now, when we talk about emotional health, 
You know, these are the things under emotional health, self-confidence. But in retirement, the challenge you're going to have is usually anxiety. Anxiety and depression, these are emotional issues, very serious emotional issues. They are very common. In fact, research has shown that one in three retirees usually feel depressed. And the rate of depression in your retirement age is higher than what you ob obtain in the, in the general population. Then in the area of spiritual health, we talked about it. You know, there's issue of loss of self-esteem. You know, because, you know, when you are going to work, you derive sense of purpose. You derive meaning from your work. Who are you? I am a doctor. I'm an engineer. I'm a lawyer. So the law, the dog, you know, those things, they make you feel, ah, I've accomplished and all that. But the time is coming when you now retire. You can no longer be a doctor. If you just be a doctor by name. You can no longer go to the clinic. You cannot be an engineer. You can no longer do all those things that you used to do. So, if these are the things that give you meaning, you are going to have loss of relevance. You start, there's the issue of loss of relevance and loss of self-esteem. There are so many things that can bring loss of self-esteem. Maybe you were the provider. And then when you retire, eventually you are going to be the one that will be provided for. You become a dependent. You know, uh, you start looking up to people. If you didn't um, handle your finances well to save for the retirement, you find yourself having to now look up to people to take care of you. And of course, lack of feeling of fulfillment. If your work was all you knew how to do, and then you are now looking at retirement, nothing else. You know, how many people have you impacted in life? How many, you know, what can you say? How have you helped the society? These are the issues that come um, battling in your mind. And you have to provide answers to them. So, and then not having desire to contribute to the greater good of society or selfishness. These are challenges. You know, so we look at them. Then social health. The main issue there in retirement is loneliness. Loneliness is a very big disease in retirement, and we'll talk about how to um, tackle them. Then limited ability to connect with others. If you couldn't make friends when you, when you were working, in retirement it's a, a lot difficult to, to learn how to start making friendships. And you may be having problems with, you know, relationship, even when you have made friends. If you're not a friendly person, to maintain friendship becomes an issue. You get easily irritated, you know, um, you're feeling that the person doesn't like you or is talking against you and all that. Before you know it, the relationship breaks. You know, so people are feeling um, unstable or I'm, I'm looking for that word again. The you know, feeling that, uh, let me just, uh, it, I, I remember it. So, feeling of depression and anxiety, then lack of social skills, communication skill, emotional intelligence, ability to relate with people, ability to, you know, handle emotions, not blowing your top easily and all that. These are skills that are required in social health. So, you need to know how to pick up those skills. And if you don't know those skills, it's easy to, you know, uh, not to respect personal boundaries. You have a friend, you don't know when to visit the person. <laughs> Maybe in the middle of the night, you're knocking on the door and, you know, because it, it has not been part of your system for a while. Of course, we talked about loneliness. And why do we have loneliness? reduce social connections. You're, you're no longer in touch with your work mates, your colleagues in the office. You are now, you know, at home. You can't get up and go to work anymore. And then, and it, the issue of loneliness becomes worse if 
you know, usually around this time, one could be bereaved. You could become a widow or a widower, you know, and it becomes worse if you lose your partner. So these are issues. Loneliness really has to be tackled. And then mental health. If you don't, if you're not careful, you start, no matter how intelligent you were, as you are getting to retirement, your ability to, you know, to remember things, to reason, you know, your reasoning capacity will begin to drop unless you consciously maintain it. You know, we're going to talk about, uh, there was, um, I think I, I read it some time ago, in US or in the West, there's a time they, they said, I think it still happens, that the retirees, we are enrolling into the in, in schools of medicine. Somebody goes into retirement, before you know it, he's studying medicine. Why is he studying medicine? It not, not necessarily that he wants to practice, but the, the rigors of you know, reading and remembering things, he wants to keep the, 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 the cognitive ability alive, you know, maintain, prevent memory loss, and then there's the issue of grief, and then sleep, again, sleep disturbances are very important in um, mental health. And then lack of drive or impetus. You know, since there is no reason to get up and go to work in the morning. You know, so for some, for some of us, we may no longer have the need. You just get up in the morning, just be looking at the ceiling. Don't know what else to do with your time. And then unable to relax. We've talked about these ones, you know. Um, it says, common challenges, anxiety due to struggling to switch off from work mode. There are some people, even though they have um, retired from work, you know, um, you get up in the morning, you start preparing, only to discover that, oh, I've retired. So you find it difficult to, to adjust. And then, and it usually happens during the few, first few weeks or even months of retirement. You just get up and you go and bath, put on your clothes, and you discover that you didn't have any place to go. And that brings anxiety if you don't know what to do with your time. You know, so some even go and stand in the sun and collapse waiting for their pension. So they feel that it's below their dignity. So how do we manage... You? You are ahead of this. Before we discuss that, I want you to know something. Now, your aging is largely a function of your lifestyle. Do we agree? Yes. You know, the fact that we've talked about the things that happen in aging, the truth is that they are still under your control. They are not, even though they are inevitable, they must, inevitable, they must come, but you can control them. Now, what determines your health? Look at this. Now, genetic factors account for 30%. Behavior accounts for 40%. Health care, that is your ability to seek you know, uh, health services, to check your, yourself, 10%. The environment where you live contributes 5%. And then, Social interactions, you know, ability to connect with people, 15%. Now, if you look at, if you add up everything, you know, um, these other ones will make you, will amount to like 70%, right? Now, genetic factors account for 30%. And why it is important is this, it's even... You see, this research is even giving a lot to genetic factors. Why this information is important is that some people will say, um, yes, it runs in our blood, it's in our family. Are you, are you diabetic? Yes, so it runs in our family. Um, yes, my father had diabetes or had hypertension or cancer. And so unconsciously you assume that because they had those things, then it's, um, I'm next in line. 
you know. So, but the truth is that even though you may have the genes that will cause those diseases, it is still within your power to suppress those genes. In fact, that's what you call, um, well, I'll get to that later. That's what you call um, epigenetics. It's an area of medicine now. It's very popular in the study of aging. Epigenetics is telling us that even though you may have the genes, maybe you have, um, your sister had breast cancer or had, somebody had um, uh, cancer of the cervix or cancer of the prostate in your family. Maybe a, a, a very close relation. You know, that means the gene is there. Epigenetics is saying that the fact that the gene is there, you have the power to, you know, to allow the gene to express or not to express. The way you live your life, if you're able to take control of this, you can suppress this. You understand? So, genetics cannot really determine the outcome of your health. So even if they're having, if they had uh, heart attacks or cancers and all those things in my, in my family, I can say, not me, I, I, I'm different. In fact, the information should, the, the importance of that information should be that, okay, I know that this runs in my family, so that means I have to start working against it so that it doesn't appear in my own life. That's the importance of this. So if you understand that, you now dis discover that the retirement is actually a time for harvest. It's actually, if it's about lifestyle, so whatever happens in your, in your retirement, the state of your health is a time to reap what you have sown with your life. If you spent your years smoking, you know, abusing alcohol, doing all those negative things, it is during retirement they will begin to to manifest. No, but the truth is that in reality, even though lifestyle is a very important factor that determines our health, there was a survey that was done in the US recently, a telephone survey. They were asking people, 153,000 adults, you know, simple things that make for good health. They were asking them, do you smoke? Are you maintaining a healthy weight? Do you consume five fruits and vegetables every day? Do you exercise regularly? When they asked that question, only 3% said yes, that they used to do these things. And if you're able to do these things, you're already you know, on the path to good health. If you're able to do this, just maintain yourself, sorry, maintain yourself on this you are going to have a very good um, health, even to old age. They won't really bother you. But the truth is that many of us, we don't follow these things. Of course, the chickens will always come home to roost. Look at this one. is uh, remember Ronaldo, the world, uh, the world champion in football, Brazilian. Look at him now. Can see the difference. Huh? It's him now. That's him. Look at him now. Huh? They are the same. It's him. This is him. It's him. <laughs> okay. You didn't see the one of Diego Maradona before he died. I know it's even worse. Okay. Then, when you talk about aging, there are two ages um, that we know. There is what you call the chronological age and there is what you call the biological age. Now, the chron chronological age has to do with your birthday. When were you born? Okay, I'm 60 years. That is your age, you are 60 years. But biological age refers to the age of your body. How old is your body? You understand? Research has shown that some people could be 60 years 
but their body is telling them 80 years. You could be 40 years, but your body is clocking 60 years. So that's why this man is, you know, is 60 years, but you can see the, you know, the age of the, the, the biological age here is 40 years, but it's looking 60. So that is um, what we have to know. Everybody has to know, you have to know your biological age and your, your um, chronological age. So if you want to do that, you go to reage.com. You go to this website. You know, I encourage you to go there. If you log into this website, www.reage.com, they are going to ask you a, a, a lot of questions. By the time you answer all those questions, they will give you your biological age. You tell them your, your chronological age, and they will give you your biological age. You know, some of, some of us, I think I did that in recently, you know, I won't tell you what the answer is. <laughs> okay, so the good news is that aging can be controlled. You know, the fact that somebody is aging doesn't mean you just ignore yourself. You can control your aging. You, if you can see this, this should be your dream. You, you can decide to age or not to age. You can see them having a, a swell time, even in their old age. So, adopting a healthy lifestyle, that's another news. Even if you have been messing up, even if you messed up, you know, all along, it is never too late. If you begin to correct the things you did wrong before, your body will still thank you for it eventually. So, adopting a healthy lifestyle can reverse your aging process within months. You know, that is good news. So, now, um, look at another research that was done. 31 men with low-risk prostate cancer. They followed an intensive nutrition and lifestyle intervention for, for three months. And they were able to look at the genes that were, because, remember I just talked about epigenetics. You know, there are genes that benefit your health and genes that, you know, that will cause disease. When you begin to live a healthy lifestyle, your body will begin to switch off genes that will cause disease. And the beneficial genes will be the ones that will be manifesting. So when they did this, people, they subjected them to that um, treatment for three months. Expression of more than 500 genes were beneficially affected. So genes controlling tumor formation, oxidative stress, and inflammation were reduced, while the other ones that made for good health were, um, were upregulated. And that's what we call telomeres. Telomeres, as you, are as, the, the, as you are living, your cells are dividing every day. There are certain things that look like drumsticks that stick out of your, um, the chromosomes. Look at these, um, these cells. As the cells begin to divide, as they continue to divide, the telomeres will be getting um, shorter. You know, research has shown that the longer your telomere, the longer and the better your life will be. So when they did all this, they discovered that their telomeres were getting longer. Okay? So you can control your aging. That is the... Um, the talk here. Now, I have, I have seen this, and you know, I've uh, experienced this with some of my patients. I remember recently, we went to Enugu, we had them, um, you know, uh, I was with this, um, this Catholic uh, hospital here. We went for a conference. And then, I was in the midst of these sisters, and I, I noticed that there was um, this lady. So many of the sisters, She's a sister herself. They gathered around her, and they, I discovered that they were schoolmates. And I looked at all of them. 
the, the people who were greeting her were looking quite elderly, and she was looking quite young and fresh and all that. And they were supposed to be schoolmates. So I got interested to know why they were, you know, were, um, asking her questions. Then she started telling us that um, she said that she's a cancer survivor, that she was in the U.S. and uh, she had endometrial cancer. And then the doctor told her that she needed chemotherapy. And she asked the doctor, so what are the chances if I go through this treatment now, what will happen to me? And the doctor said, well, 40, 60, or 50, 50 are best, you know, that you will survive. Plus the fact that they're going to have some side effects of treatment. So she said, okay, that you think about it. She went home and she thought about what the doctor told her. And wisdom became profitable to direct. She ran to the net and started looking for things that could, anything that had to do with good health. She said she started going for health talks, you know, anywhere she had her seminar she attended, that she needed to know an alternative. So eventually she went to the doctor. Told the doctor, I don't want the chemotherapy. I've decided to, you know, um, adopt a healthy lifestyle. Let me see how it will work. I've been hearing about this. So she said she subjected herself to that. It was not easy, but she went through it. You know, anything, reduce sugar, you know, change her food. She was active. She did all those things that they told her. The one thing she noticed, after that initial period of going through that painful change in her lifestyle, her um, BP started coming down. She used to have BP. And she kept doing that until when she now went for the next uh, checkup. The doctor that saw her said, you know, looked at the folder and looked at her again and said, are you, are you the owner of this folder? She said, yes. Is there any problem? She said, because what I'm seeing here doesn't tally with what, you know, what I'm seeing on you. So she said, eh, so that means the thing is working. So she went back and started doing more and more. And she said, and since that time that her weight came down, her skin said looking fresh, she said looking younger, and that this thing happened 20 years ago. Somebody that had cancer of the womb. 20 years later, she's looking healthy and she said, okay, that because she came from Joss. She said, okay, that became, you know, a kind of encouragement for her. So there was a, a lady that had breast cancer and being somebody that had gone through that experience. So this lady had a child and the husband abandoned her because of the cancer. So she went to the lady, told her, just follow, look at my story, let's see how it will work on you. And the lady, you know, out of desperation, followed her and she achieved the same results with the lady. The cancer equally melted away. So it's easy, I mean, it's possible to live above these illnesses. That's the point. Okay. What is strange here? This is a question. What's, what is strange in these pictures? Huh? Yeah. A young man using walking stick. Is there any old person there? Huh? Okay. Well, there are young men using walking stick. What does that tell you? Huh? This has status. I think uh, yeah, you're right in a way. It's the mindset. Do you know that walking stick is a symbol of disability? You know, the fact that somebody is using walking stick is a symbol of disability. So these people are already thinking old. Even though they are young people, they are already thinking old. 
you know, and the body is very funny. We have the subconscious mind. When you begin to think old, your body begins to respond to what you're thinking. So, you know, some people, they, they use it as um, status, but using walking stick, those people using walking stick, if they had their way, they want to throw away the walking stick. But you see our young people, they are using, they are looking for walking stick. I have arrived. You know? But you are not supposed to be walking with a walking stick. You have to be thinking strong and healthy, no matter what. So the idea is to die young as late as possible. It's a popular quote by Ashley Montagu. It's a British anthropologist. She, he made these comments, and globally, you know, people who are doing research on age, that is the, the uh, motto that they usually quote for people. That the idea, my aim in life should be to die young as late as possible. In other words, even if I have to live, you know, to, even if I'm living to 100 years, let it be that I am dying young. Not by the time I'm getting to 70, they're not carrying me about. I can't uh, do anything for myself. So even at 70, I should be somebody that can, you know, for some of us that are Christians, Abraham went to war at what age? I think 90 years and defeated kings. Somebody 85 years was asking to do mountain climbing and all that. So now that's the area I was talking about, the new field of epigenetics. You know, we've discovered that when you live healthy lifestyle, your gene composition will begin to change to favor you and you live a healthy life. So tips to managing your health and social engagements ahead of retirement. Tip number one, you have to embrace the change to make most of it. You know, the reason some people have issues with retirement is that, you know, they, are, they don't want to accept that reality. Do like that. 